Okay. I'm live now. Okay. So I'm waiting on people to join. And what you would have. Okay. Okay. It's two different things, though, I think. Am I live too? Yep. Four people are here. Okay, so I think that there is two different videos going, two different lives going. So let us get into this one. Hello, hello, hello. Hey guys, sorry for the confusion. This is the actual live stream that I announced for four o'clock. The other one was on my laptop, so now we're on the phone. So just gonna wait for some more people to join. As you can see, there's a whiteboard behind me. So if you got your questions, we're diving in. And there it is. Okay. Yep, there it is. So you can just read those. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, this is so exciting. This is so, like, different. This is so weird. All right, guys. If you are in the building, let me know where you're coming from. Where do you live? And you're going to have to read that to me because I don't see it right now. Oh, here we go. Yep. Okay, people. We got Buffalo. Yeah. Hi from Ohio. Hello. I'll work for you. Okay, to Buffalo or multiple? Is that the same person? South Carolina, Atlanta. Ooh, ooh. What's up, guys? Oh my God, I really thank you guys for joining me. You can be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here. So let's jump right into it. Um, if you're here, you're from Memphis. What's up, V Coco? Just found your channel last night. Well, you're great. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this live Q&A. Ask me anything. If you don't know, I'm Dara, real estate investor and entrepreneur here in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you're new to my channel, if you just found me last night, <laughs> Dallas, what's up? If you just found me last night or if you've been rocking me since day one, I'm here to help you guys. Yeah, I have tons of videos on my channel um, helping you with wholesaling. I have a sprinkle of like landlord videos and some uh, creative financing as well. So if you have any questions whatsoever, however basic or not basic they are, go ahead and feel free to ask me. Um, I'm ready with the whiteboard, but we don't even have to use it if it doesn't involve that kind of situation. So let's hear it. What's the difference between a subject to and a lease option? That's a great question. And they like these messages disappear. So I got to be like fast <laughs> with reading them. And so I didn't see who wrote that. But the difference between oh, that. Wu-Tang, okay, you got me. She got me back there, okay. Um, the difference between a subject to and a lease option. So a subject to, they're both creative financing, and I do have a video on that. So creative financing is an umbrella term, and they both fall under that umbrella. Now with subject to, it only works if there is a mortgage in place. You cannot do, you can do lease option, but subject to is only for mortgages. So if it's free and clear, you can't do subject to. So what you do with subject two, you take over someone's existing mortgage. So if John Doe has a mortgage on 123 Main Street, John Doe is gonna keep that mortgage in his name, but you, Wu-Tang, will take over that mortgage and make those payments on behalf of John Doe. Um, so that's subject two, more or less overarching. And then lease option is in a scenario where you are simply leasing with the option to purchase. So the title of the property remains in the homeowner's name, unlike subject two. With subject two, the title is now transferred over to you, but the mortgage stays in John Doe's name. Stop me if I'm not making any sense. Um, but so the difference, the main difference is um, subject two, there's a mortgage and the mortgage stays in the previous homeowner's name, title comes to you. Lease option, there may or may not be a mortgage, um, but you are simply leasing, you do not, uh, obtain the title the title remains in the homeowner's name we have more questions coming in oh y'all coming with the questions um you, you, you can read them in order because i see them and they disappear so i got wu-tang in the subject too i hope that helped who's next 
Taylor just said hi. Just said, hey, hi, Taylor. Taylor. Hey. Okay. Mm-hmm. Questions? I saw one from Clinton, but it went away, so I don't know. No. Do you always lock property under contract before you start marketing? Looking for buyers. That's a great question. I'm going to repeat it. Do you always... Who asked that question? Uh, Quincy. Quincy. What's up, Quincy? Um, so the question was, do you always lock a property up before you start marketing it to buyers, a contract? Before you start marketing it to buyers? The official answer should be yes. You, because when you pr- pr- promote a property, um, if you don't have any equitable interest, then you really have no right to sell the property or the contract. Now, what you could do, and what I typically do, is if I know I'm maybe pending uh, the signature of the homeowner or where something where we're verbally in acceptance, but we don't have it in ink yet on paper, then I start like fishing for buyers and getting them interested in the deal. The only thing I don't give them is the address. So you can definitely, you know, 123 Main Street, you, you have it with John Doe, but it's not under contract yet. You'd be like, hey, buyers, I have this deal in Atlanta, Georgia, three bedroom, two bath. These are the numbers. And are you interested? And then if you lock it up with John Doe, you already got people interested. Now, in the event that for some reason you can't lock it up with John Doe, then you just tell your buyers, hey, that property is no longer available and they should be all right. Be like, but I got more coming. Okay. Hope that helped, Quincy. What's next? Clinton is asking you if you were frustrated if it was frustrated when you found a property but it was owned by an LLC. All right, is that Clinton? Clinton. Clinton said, "Was it frustrating uh, if I found a property and that's owned, owned by an LLC? LLC?" Well, let me ask you something, Clinton. Why would you be frustrated because of that? So the answer to me for me is no. Um, you shouldn't be frustrated if you find that a property is owned by an LLC. There's a lot of different things that you can do with that property. You can toss it and be like, oh, I don't want to deal with another investor. Or you can find out who owns the LLC. Once you find that person, you can skip trace that person, reach out to them, and see if maybe they're interested in selling. Um, I will say that a lot of times if it is owned by an LLC or an investor or investment company, then they may not be that motivated to sell, but you never know. So that's not a hard, you know, fact. It's just typically, um, like for instance, if you reach out to, uh, me, cause you saw a property that I own and it's in my LLC or one of my entities, probably not going to sell it. So yeah, that's that, but it's not frustrating. Yeah. You have another question from Bree. Bree is asking you, do you use special programs to find buyers and or sellers? I've seen webinars that are selling special software to make all selling easier. That's from Bree. Okay, do I use a special software? To special program. Special program to do what? To find buyers To or find sellers. buyers and sellers. A special program, no, not anything um, special, no program, nothing electronic. Um, I do have a video on the 10, 10 different ways that I find buyers. Um, as far as sellers though, it's pretty similar to the 10 different ways that I find buyers, but I think your best way or my best way to find either buyers or sellers is to just get from behind the computer and go drive the area. So, um, to answer your question, I don't have any programs that I could think of. I mean, aside from like purchasing lists, um, which is not a program, you know, but purchase lists off of list source for homeowner leads buyers i've never purchased a list for buyer actually i have but anyways you just go out in the field find your buyers find your sellers candy said hello hello candy from cali, from cali. California. oh my gosh it's like what one o'clock i don't know what time it is over there but thanks for joining quincy said hi hi quincy again right i answered your question i hope yeah and we then said thank you so he was happy with your questions and you're so, welcome you're welcome yeah. You have to read the question again. She missed a chunk of the question if you thought it was abandoned, mm-hmm. but it was owned. Dominique is asked to say, good afternoon. Where can I find contact templates? Contract or contact? You said contact. Maybe you mean contract? Where? Dominique, did you mean contract? You said contacts. Where can you find contract templates? Mm-hmm. Well, look no further than in the description of all of my videos because I do have contract they're not templates they're actual contracts that i use um for sale they have been vetted by an attorney whatever state you're in i would just ask you to have your attorney vet it to make sure it works for your state so i'll have it in the description of this video once i post it 
but if you go check literally any other video of mine that's about real estate then you should see the link for the five contracts that i have for you and Timae is asking is it necessary to get a real estate attorney for your first deal and so forth is it necessary to get a real estate attorney for your first deal you need a real estate attorney for all your deals yeah. So, um, if you want to specify what you mean by that, go ahead and do that, but you, you're going to need, if, if you're in a attor closing attorney state, now there are some states who are title company states, so I believe that, I don't know actually what states are, but there are some states where you do closings at a title company. Here in Georgia, we use closing attorneys, so every deal that I close, I need an attorney. And Wu-Tang said he will work for you to learn the ropes, and he'll work for free. Oh my gosh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna talk. We'll talk offline. Florida is a title company or a closing attorney state. Okay, yes, contract, uh, Dominique Dukes. Yeah, so contract. So I did answer your question, and you can find it in the link to any one of my um, videos. Actually, it's tinyurl.com backslash rei contracts. So that's the link. Thanks for doing this, newbie here. Lex gets fit. What's up, Lex? Brother oh, Marshall is asking, what do you think of Nick Hida's plan on not selling and renting instead? I don't know who that person is that you just men mentioned in their plan, but what was the plan? Not selling and doing what? Not selling and renting. In other words, don't sell, but rent, rent instead. That's a great, um, that that's a great plan. Goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that plan, to each his own. So, yeah, great plan. <laughs> I voted oh, the God. greatest man ever. Uh, oh, I got a Trump follower on here. Trump, my love, I voted for the greatest man to ever live. Donald Trump, good for you. <laughs> for title. Ooh, so either a real estate attorney or a title company. I'm in Louisiana. I really think that Louisiana is a title company, but you got to check that out because I really don't know. I will look for my state thing star. Yes, do that because I, I think Louisiana is a title, but just double check because I don't know. And just let them know the questions are coming so fast if you don't get to them. No, I know. That's where you come in. You got to read the questions. Can you go into detail on, hold on, on, on co-wholesaling? on how co-wholesaling works. Like if I help bring a buyer, do I make money on top of the wholesale or do I make money through splitting the assignment fee? That's a great question, Quincy. Um, can you go into details on it? Yeah. Well, I definitely will go into details on that, but I do have a video on exactly that co-wholesaling. So with co-wholesaling, you could either be the person with the deal, you have the contract A to B with the homeowner, or you could be the person with the buyer and then you bring the contract B to C with the buyer. So either way, let's say you are the person with the homeowner, you have the contract A to B, and you're looking for another wholesaler to find you a buyer. There's a lot of things that you can do to entice that or compensate that wholesaler. You can say, hey man, I've got this deal under contract at $100,000. I'm asking for $110,000. If you find me a buyer at 110, we can split it 50, 50, 70, 30, you can get a thousand, whatever. So I hope that makes sense. So if you have the contract with the seller, you already know what you want to get for it. So you already put your assignment fee on top, right? So when you bring in another wholesaler who's going to find you a buyer, you can say, let's split it. Or you can tell them, I'm asking 110, that's what I want. And if you want to get on, on this deal, I just ask that you add your fee on top. Meaning that person would put it out to their buyers at like 113, 115 or something that still makes sense for everybody involved. So that's if you're on the A to B side. If you are the person with the buyer and you come to find another wholesaler with a contract, they're pretty much going to dictate, like I just said, they're pretty much going to tell you, hey man, I'm asking 110, you can come in at 110 and still get something, or there's not much room for you at 110, so add your fee on top. So that, I hope that makes sense, that's how you get paid. Now you would definitely need it in writing, you need what's called a JV agreement, which again I have available that's one of the five contracts that i have in my package for sale yeah. and um let me finish answering this question then i'll get to the rest of y'all <laughs> anyway so, sorry about that so yeah so you'll need a contract in place if you do co-wholesale with other people and i hope that makes sense as a co-wholesaler you're either the person with the buyer or the homeowner contract so okay kellyn is asking you found a distressed property how do i find an owner other than on a lease source you the found a source doesn't work in south carolina that is so true. You're so right because list source does not work in South Carolina. 
So if you found a distressed property, how do you find the owner? So um, you can go to, I would assume in South Carolina, you can go to your county's tax assessor website. So I don't know any county in South Carolina, but whatever county the property is in, you go to the county tax assessor's website you should be able to type in the address of the property and from there it should give you the homeowner's information and i keep saying it should because i have no idea but in georgia that's exactly what it, what happens if you go to the county um tax assessor's website you put in the address and they give you the homeowner's information they give you their name and they should give you the their, their mailing address so next. local is asking you what company do you prefer to use in building list and skip tracing what company do I prefer to use in building a list and skip tracing? Mm -hmm. I don't use a company for building a list, but in the past when I have purchased a list of lead, uh, for what? <laughs> Buyers list, what, sorry. Yeah, skip tracing, how do you Read the question tracing? again. What company do I use mm -hmm. for? Yeah, what company do you use in building your list? Building my tracing. list. Yeah. Oh, okay, see I was about to ask, answer a question, I don't even know what you're asking. Building my list for what buyers or sellers? Clarify that for me, and skip I'll skip tracing. Back. Yeah. Yeah, but who do you skip trace? Your sellers? Well, yeah. It's, okay, if you're skip, if you're buying a list of leads for um, seller leads, I use List Source and skip tracing. I really don't even have a company that I can vouch for at this point in my life, so um, I actually outsource that. So I have somebody who has access to very accurate source, and I don't ask questions on what he uses. For skip tracing for new people who this is uh sandrika griffey for new people who aren't experienced how do you determine how much to offer a seller to put the property under contract is there a formula you use there is a formula girl let me get on the um let me get on the whiteboard is there a formula to use for an offer yeah absolutely it's called the mayo formula mao maximum allowable offer of the ard formula real simple oh not a good marker You know what, guys? We're going to try them all and see which one works the best. Here we go, right? Can you see that? I hope it's not backwards, too. Is it backwards? Just let me know before I go on. Is it backwards? No. Okay. You it's got me. Fine. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so you have the maximum allowable offer formula, which is the after repair value, ARV. Can you see this? Mm hmm. ARV times 70%, this number can vary, it could be 65%, it could be 75%, but let's just keep it at the typical formula, which is 70%, so after repair, after repair value times 70%, minus repairs, minus your fee, equals your maximum allowable offer. Hope you can see that. Mm -hmm. So you get your comps. That's how you find your ARV. You get uh, three comparables, at, at least three comparables. Get the average of their sold price. That's your ARV. You multiply that number by 70%, which is also 0.7 when you put it in the calculator, minus however much it's going to cost to repair the property, minus whatever you want to make, and that will be your maximum allowable offer. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. Casey is asking you if you would like to JV with him. Are you in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. Sure. Are you in Atlanta, Casey? Let me know. You're welcome, Sandrika. I just saw that. She said thank you. What's the best way to find the ARV for a property? The best way, the only way to find the ARV for a property is to get the average of the sold price of at least three different comparables. So I do have a video on that, on how you can use Zillow. So I don't know if you were asking the best way or the best source. So Zillow is a free source that is open to anyone. Um, the best source though is the multiple listing service or the MLS in whatever state you live in. So you get the, at least three comps, four, five, six, seven, however many, at least three, get the average of their sold price, <clears throat> and that's your ARV. Um, Misha is asking, do you use a dialer when you make calls? Yes, yes, girl, I do. Um, do I use a dialer when I make calls? Yes, I use Mojo Dialer. 
and they are great because you just import a list um, and of course you're gonna have to have phone numbers so you import a list and you hit go more or less they have instructions on how to walk you through how to use their system and then you just uh, have to make sure that you have a, a phone number or a phone to attach it to and you just call people like that how do you get a seller? This is Toya Tackle Steel. Ooh, I like that name. How do you get a seller to give you a number first, especially when they say, I don't know, you're the professional? That is a great question, and that is an objection, and that is something that a lot of us, myself included, have to work on uh, overcoming, and it's a part of a negotiation strategy. So if a seller tells you, I don't know, I don't have a number, you tell me you're the professional, um, especially if it's over the phone, I still wouldn't throw out a number. But you definitely want, just want to gauge your motivation because to me, that wouldn't sound like somebody who's really motivated. Um, <clears throat> they're just fishing for the best price or the best offer out there. So again, I wouldn't name a price over the phone even if they do say that. I would just divert and gain more time. I would say something along the lines of, yeah, well, you're correct, I am the professional and I definitely have done my research as far as what the going rate is fair market value in the area however you now I'm in the business to make money to make a profit I do want it to be a fair offer win-win situation so you know instead of me offering you something like $20,000 for your for your home I want you to tell me what it is that you're looking for and then you kind of find out what their next move is what's their reason for selling because if their reason for selling is to maybe downsize move out of state whatever they're going to need capital for their next move if that makes sense if their reason for selling is because their family member got ill they're going to need that capital for that so okay well you know how much are the hospital bills or something along the lines where you can get them talking about numbers and then you can gauge and be like well i got a mortgage and it's 70,000 so you know they're gonna at least need to cover that mortgage so I hope that helped and answer your question the client wants to know if anybody is wholesaling in South Carolina that'd be for you guys to talk amongst yourselves and figure that out <laughs> what if you don't have what if Jawan D what if you don't have less than three comps <clears throat> you can use two you double, you, have yeah three. double negatives there but I'm assuming you meant what if you have don't three. have three comps Okay. or if you comps. have less than three comps yes. um, if you have less than three comparables then maybe you want to change your parameters so a comparable is a house that is within I start with half a mile radius because in Atlanta it's a very hot competitive market so and a street by street things change just up the street from this house so half a mile radius if you don't find a house within at least three houses within half a mile radius you maybe stretch it out to one mile radius um, if you don't find at least three comps in the last six months, maybe you stretch it out to the last nine months. So you can change the parameters of what you're looking for. And if at that point you still don't have at least three comparables, then maybe it is not a uh, flipping area or maybe it's not the market hasn't um, doesn't dictate for a fix and flip area. Maybe it's a rental market. So then maybe you go look for rental comps. Shamika wants to know if you would if you're looking for people to do driving for dollars for you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely, guys. I didn't wear my uh, bird dog shirt today. I wore my real estate shirt today. But I I would appreciate if you would like to do driving for dollars for me. Let's talk. Contact you, yes. Thank you. Might be on the grammar. That's okay. Taylor H., I got, uh, do you need any money going into a wholesaling deal? If so, what would it be for? I'm still very new and learning. Hey Taylor, it's okay to be new, that's okay. Um, do you need any money going into a wholesaling deal? So, depends. Uh, it depends. Um, if your contract states that with the homeowner, you're going to pay them earnest money, then there's some the money that you would need. My contracts do not mention earnest money at all, but when I was first starting out, just like you, um, I had contracts that I think my earnest money was $10, and because of that, some people would say, oh no, I need you to pay me 100, I need you to pay 500. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's just forget about earnest money. So earnest money is something that some people need when wholesaling uh, or contracting a deal. You would need money for marketing. So I don't, I, I hope I'm answering your question um, with that. But other than that, as far as the actual deal goes, you wouldn't need any kind of money except for marketing and maybe earnest money. Quincy is asking you, when you calculate offers, do you always stick to 
Um, <clears throat> no, and that's why I said that this number changes depending on a lot of things. So this could be, uh, for those who maybe didn't understand, when he said 30%, that's uh, the opposite. So if you do the ARV times 70%, you're giving your buyer and yourself a 30% discount. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, do I stick to the 30%? Um, no, sometimes it could be 25% discount or 35% uh, discount. So it just varies. It depends on the type of market we're in. Is it a seller's market or is it a buyer's market? Um, does, my, does my cash buyer, is he okay or is he or she okay with 75% ARV or are they a 65% buy and buy? Kind of person, so um, that thirty percent varies. Tamir wants to know if you get business card before your first deal to show sellers when introducing yourself. Just to be safe, I say yeah. Just go ahead, and that's probably one of the first investments you want to make is in is in business cards because I mean, when you walk away from the home from the seller appointment, you're like, um, yeah, just call me, keep in touch, and they don't have anything to remember you by. Now, mind you, people throw away business cards all day and night. But it's at least better to be like, stick it to you. I have a business card, contact me. Um, so yeah, definitely invest in some business cards. I got a video on that too, guys. Check that out. And how I designed it myself for free. And then I got it printed by a company here in Atlanta. When driving for dollars, sorry, Dakota. Uh, when driving for dollars, how and what neighborhoods do you target? <clears throat> that is up to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. What I do is a couple of things. I think when we first started, we went out to meetings, a lot, a lot, a lot of meetings, a lot of RIA meetings. We met so many different cash buyers who kind of told us what and where they were looking. So if I got a list of maybe 10 cash buyers and these are the zip codes that they buy in, that's the zip codes I'm gonna be driving for dollars in. And um, what that's, so that's the where I'm looking for. You can also do your own market research and find out, you know, the most cash transactions in my 10 mile radius from me. Um, you can say, whatever, do your, do your market research to find that out. But I think your buyers will be the best bet to dictate where you need to be driving for dollars. And you said, what are we looking for? Um, you're looking for the telltale signs of a distressed property. So is it vacant looking? Is it boarded up? Is there a um, mail piled up in the mailbox? If you know, if it's open, is it raggedy looking? Is it run down? Is the grass overgrown in the summertime? Um, you know, if it just doesn't look loved. Clinton is asking, do you find a lot of homes that look abandoned, but then you find out that people actually live there? <laughs> yeah, actually sometimes. And I'm like, oh my God, people live here? But uh, even then, I'm like, you, wanna, do you, you sure you want to live here? You want to sell your house? So yeah, that happens. You find a what you think is an abandoned home and somebody lives there. Thanks, Dakota. You're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Bree's asking if you're gonna keep this live stream for on YouTube so we can, they can watch later. I will. <clears throat> yes. I will keep it live or like on YouTube. So archived. Dara is hilarious. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Someone asked how old I am. How old do you think I am? Um, <laughs> crew Lifestyle, thank you for this, but what's the best way to keep consistent leads in Atlanta? I keep running out and driving for dollars, having no one to call after driving for dollars. Ooh, I just had a, a consultation this morning with someone, and I told them this exact thing because a lot of people think that it's quantity. Um, yes, I do sell leads and list of leads from 500 to 2,000, but let me tell you, if you can't work 500 leads, then what are you doing with 2,000? So it's all about the follow-up. It's all about consistency. So drive for dollars. And I get it because I was the same way. We used to drive for dollars all the time. I'm like, okay, we already passed this house. Uh, we already got this one on the list, right? So but once you collect your list, you just cultivate that. Or maybe go to another area and find um, list. I believe you said you were in Atlanta. Trust me, there's places to go and find you some, some leads in Atlanta. So he's asking if you use Band-Aid signs. If so, how many do you put out a month? No, I do not use Band-Aid signs. Uh, we used to when we first started out, but it's just such a waste of time. And my mom is the one reading the questions. She's also my business partner. She will tell you, the, I think one of the first Band-Aid signs we put out, we got a phone call, so excited. And the person was like, uh, you need to come take this sign down. And we are like, oh, okay. By, the, by then we're like on the other side of town. Like, nah, well, if, you, if it's that big of a deal, you can just take it down. 
but we're not coming back to take it down. So I don't really mess with banded signs unless it's to sell a deal. So I don't attract homeowner leads or seller leads with banded signs, um, but I do use banded signs for buyer leads, but that's kind of like a Hail Mary strategy. If it's like, dang, I really can't get this deal sold, let me just go flood the whole area with banded signs. It's like cheap house for sale, stuff like that. But other than that, I don't mess with banded signs. I'm loving this. You guys are keeping me like active. I didn't even think people would show up. <laughs> y'all got questions for days i love it um are you gonna keep oh yes is instagram good for marketing it is great for marketing misha yes oh my god clinton did you find a lot of homes that look yep answer that one once you get a property under contract with the seller tevin bama hi dara once you get a property under contract with the seller do you contact the title company first or market for a buyer to submit the contract together i Make sure I get a buyer first before I even get the title company or here in Georgia, the clothing attorney involved. I make sure I get a buyer first. So I get a con under contract with the homeowner and then I market, 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 get a buyer. So now I have two contracts to send to the attorney and that's what I do. But um, because if you, depending on your relationship with an attorney, if you get a contract with the homeowner, send it, to the, send it to the attorney, they open up escrow and they start doing the title search and all this great stuff that costs money. And if you can't close on it or you don't have a buyer, then they've already expended their time, money and resources. So the attorney's gonna want something from you. So I just wait till I have it all, all my um, T's crossed and I's dotted. Hope that answered your question. Uh, Andres Lanham says, hi Dar, do you need a real estate agent to make a deal? You don't. Simple as that. You do not. Um, da -da 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 -da. Kaylin Carter, I have another question. If I bought a house for the taxes, can I assign to someone else for a fee? Yes, you can. Um, I know that if you go to the tax auction or the tax sale, you can acquire properties for real, real cheap then, but the original owner has a year and a day to uh, remedy those back taxes. So yes, but with a caution. Yes, you can assign a tax lien property, but with caution, because you won't technically own it until a year and a day when the <clears throat> if the homeowner does not ever come back and remedy those um, taxes, and then they owe you some money after that. But you can't assign a tax lien. So he's asking if you read any good books lately on wholesaling, real estate, if so, yeah. If so, name yeah. a book. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. And recently, have I read any wholesaling books? No, but I can name you some that I, I read when I first started out. And they're not um, like solely on wholesaling, but they're about real estate, mindset, investing, wealth, and things like that. So. Um, the Richest Man in Babylon is a really good one that if you haven't read, then you should. Uh, the 10X Rule by Grant Cardone is one, a really good one. That's, I think, the first, <clears throat> one of the first books I read, if not the first book I read when I started out wholesaling. And that's just more about, like, mindset, taking over, 10Xing everything that you're doing, what you think this is the potential you're operating at when this is your real, real life potential. So, get into that one if you haven't. Um, there's a lot of books that I ordered off of bigger pockets that are specifically about wholesaling. So get into those as well. Titles have escaped me at the moment, but yeah, if I remember, I'll link them in the description. Taylor H. Where does the title company make their money from? I'm meeting one next week to see if we can work together in the future. Don't you worry where they make their money from because that's their business and trust me, they make their money. They make their money with the title work and the underwriting and whatever else is involved. They make their money on the closing fees when it's all said and done. They make their money, so don't you worry. So, I mean, if you meet with them, all you have to do is tell them like, hey, I'm prepared to do X amount of volume with your company, what's good, like, you know, and they'll be like, oh yeah, 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 they're excited to hear that. James Love, have you considered creating a masterminding, ha, huh. in the works? Something like that. Um, Toya, I know every market is different, but what do you find is your best lead source? 
Thank you for answering my question. Um, so my best lead source, because you asked about mine, here in Atlanta would be from Driving for Dollars, true and true, so absentee owners. Absentee owners, and then we've gotten some sweet deals from tired landlords and probate as well. That was my very first deal with a probate. She was, it was a, my very first deal with a probate absentee. Yeah, probate absentee, and she was like started the construction but couldn't finish, so I don't know what you call that. Um, Sandrika, are you strictly doing wholesaling or do you also dabble in fix and flip and rentals? I do it all. Yes, I do have rentals and I do um, fix and flips, fix and rents, and then this just in, getting into Airbnb as well, or short-term rentals. Hey, Nikki on Wine, I hope I said your name correctly. If not, like put it down there because I really am big on like name pronunciation. David the Kid, how do I get the probate and tax delinquency list? So I know that you can physically go into the courthouse, at wherever county courthouse you live or you want to mark it in, and you can ask them the probate court specifically, and you can go sift through the, like that's literally what we did when we first started out. We would spend, like allocate hours in a day to go to the courthouse and go to the probate court and then look through their little binder some people have binders, old school paper. Some people have it like in the system on the computer and you just sift through all the leads. So you can do that. Same with the tax uh, delinquent or you can just call up. I believe with tax delinquent, you can call up the county courthouse and, and ask them to send you a list of all the tax delinquent or all the properties that have not been paid in the past year or the past two years and get those that way. And I'm sure you can purchase them somewhere somehow too. But that's the sweat equity version. Help me out, YouTube mother. <laughs> hey, YouTube son. No, he's, uh, huh? he needs to get off. Why? Because he's using foul language on here. Who? Get him off then. David. What did he say? You don't worry about it. Don't even repeat it. Bye. I don't know what he said. Um, informed as are thankful. Would you recommend contacting attorneys for probate leads? Mm, no. And that's the only reason I say that is because, um, just from experience, I know some attorneys, and as they should, are very by the book and very loyal to their bar and their license. And so uh, it might be a conflict of interest for them to do that. But try it. I mean, if it works for you, because I'm, I'm sure some people have relationships with attorneys where they do get leads that way. But I remember trying. Yeah, I, I remember trying to like take an attorney out to lunch and be like, "Hey, man, can you see me?" They were like, <coughs> they were really up to par with their standards of ethics. So, there's that. <laughs> da, 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 da. Lakeisha Sumter, hi, I found a deal. They want 85,000, but house needs a lot of work from outside and it's not vacant. So I want to offer them 70,000. What do I say? You say just what you just told me. <laughs> this house needs a lot of work. Well, I mean, first of all, I don't know I'm, I'm assuming you ran your numbers and 70,000 is a better, is a valid offer based on the formula and all that good stuff. But um, <clears throat> what you say to them, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Feller, this property needs about X amount of thousand of work. You can maybe even exaggerate the number. And you know, just to get it up to par, we're gonna have to take on the brunt of the, the investment. It's a huge risk for us because it needs this, 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 and this. And you know, as you know, market value is here. So I can't pay market value for this property when I'm gonna to have to put X amount of thousand into it because that wouldn't make sense for me and I'm in the business, as you know, to make money, make a profit, and here's my offer. Take it or don't. Let's see. Angel. Hey Dara, loving the content. When working with an agent, how does the contract aspect of it work? Putting an addendum using your own or what? <clears throat> Great question. Hey Angel. So uh, here in Georgia, real estate agents use or real estate professionals use the GAR, the Georgia whatever, whatever, <laughs> GAR form. And I'm sure every state has it. And what we do is we've gotten very familiar with the verbiage of the GAR and we ask them to just alter it in the special stipulation. So if we want 
um, our buyers to have uh, no due diligence or we want non-refundable earnest money. We have that in the special stipulations of the GAR form. We cross out what we don't like in it, we add what we want in it, and I hope that answered your question. Let me go back and see what the question was. Let me try and answer it. I can't find it, but I hope that answered your question. Uh, Cap Rock or something? Hey, I'm 23 in Atlanta, and I'm excited about wholesaling, but do I, but how do I get over the anxiety of cold calling? <sighs> you breathe. You breathe, and you can practice with a friend, cousin, mom, brother, whatever. Um, you can role play with people before you get on the phone with the actual person, an actual homeowner. Um, that's what I did. We did a lot of role playing. We had scripts. So you want to familiarize yourself with the script. Don't read off of the script, but familiarize yourself with what you want to ask. Um, definitely just treat them like a human, like you would any, I don't know if you've ever worked a customer service job, but I used to work at a restaurant and things like that. So I'm like, hey, well, you know, just treat them like a customer service. Have the utmost customer service, first and foremost. Um, don't take their personality type personally. If this whether they're a great personality or not, just don't take it personally. Um, so yeah, have a script, try it out on other people, like role play with somebody who's actually serious and you know can help you, and then just do it. Just do it. Once you do your first, on to the next. No matter if it's a good call or a bad call, at least you're getting practice, and that's all it really is, it's just practice. Thank you, best wishes, is it worth it? What do you think about Carrot Investment website? Is it worth it? <laughs> Swear by it. I, I don't know what y'all use it for y'all websites, but if it ain't, <laughs> Investor I'm not endorsing, I mean, I'm not promoting whatever, whatever, but I love Investor Carrot, period. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, I want to get some more questions, and I know if you've been here for a while, you have a question and I didn't answer it. I'm really trying to get to it. I'm sorry. Have you ever, Clinton, have you ever uh, contacted sellers through social media? And is this a good source? Of course I have. I really have. Um, it all depends because, like, you know, like privacy settings on Facebook and things like that. So people will probably never in, my, in their life see my message because I just realized on Facebook there's a whole, like, abyss of hidden messages or, like, archive messages or message requests is what it's called. And I'm like, oh, my God, people have been trying to hit me up since, like, October. Like, what's up? So I do reach out to people on social media. LinkedIn is a great way, though, because I get a lot of homeowners or whatever through LinkedIn. Um, so maybe not Facebook as far as my own success with reaching out to homeowners, but just be relentless, figure it out, stalk them if you need to, if it's worth it to you. And then, yeah, so use social media, true and true. Oh, whoever said don't forget to contact me, that's on you. You gotta reach out to me, leave a comment or something, but I will forget if you don't reach out to me. Um, Wish Investor Carrot had better templates. Way too generic. Yeah, you just have to customize it yourself. But it just is a website in a box that you don't have to do anything but put your own content on. So that's why I love it. Ooh. What, Lakeisha says, what is the normal amount of days the seller has to wait for their cash offer from buyer? I don't get it. What is the normal amount? I don't understand, honestly. Um... So if you're reaching out to a seller and you want to make an offer, make an offer on the spot, make an offer, get, say in 24 hours, you'll get an offer from me, 48 hours, you'll get an offer from me, and uh, after a signing contract. So yeah, um, so you make an offer on the spot or however quickly you want or can or able to, and then you have a closing date, you know, 30, 45 days out, and then in those... 30, 45 days, in those seven days, as soon as you get on a contract, you're fighting to find a buyer. Or not even fighting, you're, you're searching for a buyer. And I hope that makes sense. Um, you guys, 43 of you guys. Uh, I went all the way to the top, so I'm trying to see. Hey, Dar, was it frustrating? Nope, I answered that one already. Special programs answered that. Do, do, do. Don't know Nate Higgers. Oh, uh, oh, I didn't even see this one. Um, really do not want to put your name, but Nushka Belizer, I think. Do you go on appointments by yourself? I'm a woman starting in the business and doing it by myself. I do not. I have before. Rare, very, very, very rarely, though. Um, but I have before, and I have a business partner who is also my mom, and she'll bust somebody up. 
<laughs> they try some. But we're two women and we go on appointments by ourselves all, all the time. I remember when we were, um, we had different agents that we would go with as well. One was a woman as well. And she was packing, so she had a gun on her. And she's like, you just never know. We don't carry weapons or anything. We just, you know, nothing has ever happened to us. And I don't know where you live or anything, but nothing will happen to you either. Um, but if you want to recruit a partner, a buddy, I would, I would recommend that. <clears throat> How do you gain access to the MLS without being a realtor? It's about who you know. That's all I can really say. It's about who you know. And um, the, kind of the same thing I said about the attorney. There's some realtors who are very stuck to the code, as they should be. They are very, you know, ethically ethical. So um, it just depends on who you know. And maybe you, you can entice them with a monetary offer or something else that they like and have that in exchange for their MLS access. Can I tell you about your first about my first deal? I can, but I'm not because this is your time for Q&As and I have a whole video on that on um, my very first deal. So I want to get to your like real meat and potato questions. Um, do sellers ever ask you to put money down when getting them under contract? Assuming we don't have a buyer yet. Yes, sell sellers do, but um, as I mentioned before, I don't know if you chimed in late, um, but on my contracts, I don't mention earnest money at all. So a lot of like 99% of the time out of sight, out of mind. So if they don't know anything about earnest money. They see my contract, they sign where they need to sign because they see the offer price that I've given them. Um, so a lot of times they don't ask me, but what I said before is um, my old contracts did have like $10 earnest money. So they're like, $10, mm -hmm, you got to do more than that. So just don't mention it. Should you pay earnest money? Ain't no shoulds in real estate not black and white so if you if, if you're with a great deal and the seller is really just adamant about you paying it then you can pay it just don't break your bank and um, you can have your buyer offset whatever that amount so if the seller wants 500 earnings money tell your buyer to give you a thousand or two thousand how do you start a cold call pick up the phone dial the number and it rings and then you're like hey is this such and such and then they're like yeah what do you want Anyways, I have videos. I'm trying. I'm being funny, but I do have uh, videos of me doing actual live cold calls. But you just introduce yourself. Well, first I ask if that's a person. I make sure I'm talking to who I need to be talking to. I ask them how they are, and I ask them if it's a good time, and then I go from there. Hey, do you want to sell your house? Ba -da, da da da. This is me. Let's get to know each other. Um. Okay. What else we got? What is the best method for contacting investor-friendly attorneys? I think the best method is uh, word of mouth. So, like, get into some meetings or something. Get into some Facebook groups with investors in your area and just ask them if they would recommend any attorneys and if they've closed with any that they like, and then there you go. I, I don't think a Google search for attorneys is necessary at all. I think that's a little weird, maybe. But, um, yeah, just word of mouth and referrals for closing attorneys. Not sure how to word this, but when presenting yourself to the seller, when cold calling, how can you not sound like a scammer? Make appointment to meet? No. You can not sound like a scammer by simply just being open, friendly, and introducing yourself, making sure that you, like, show their ego a little bit, get to know them, ask questions about them. Yeah, and don't sound robotic. Don't sound like you're reading a script, because then you would sound like a scammer know what you're talking about so that you can overcome some objections because all the time I get when I do like my creative financing calls and things like that and I recall to landlords they're always like well what's in it for you this sounds too good to be true but not like in a bad way like they're accusing me but they're like oh my god this deal I can't pass up like sounds so good to be true what's up and I'm just like trust me it's true um but it doesn't ever sound scammy so just know what you're talking about and really be able to Sound confident and credible. Um, with no access to the MLS, what websites do you determine to do you use to determine ARV? Zillow. Got a video on that. I'm interested in a builder or developer buying some land. How would you approach them? <clears throat> you would approach them like this is an opportunity that they cannot pass up. And you would just tell them, hey, I've got this lot. Um, I don't know how you found the builder, but a lot of times I go out and literally drive around and like, 
hey, nice watch you just bought. You wanna buy another? Something along those lines. You just let them know that you got some land for sale. If they're a developer, and the numbers make sense, they would hop on it. Um, would you ever put out the seller buyer contract that you use? Would I ever put it out? I don't know what you mean, but I have them for sale. I have five of them. I have two purchase and sell agreements, one for your seller, one for your buyer, a JV contract, a termination and release contract, the form that you would need to back out of a deal, and an assignment contract. Thank you for that. How do I decide which area to start in or does it matter at all? I don't know what that was in reference to, but I think maybe like an area of the market. Um, I think I did answer that question for someone else before. You, you can use your buyers to dictate what areas you want to start in. Or you can start in your own backyard, an area that you know, like the back of your hand. You know, we're building a buyer's list. Da, 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 da. You guys, I just need some context with these questions because they're going up so fast. So if you say like how or something else, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> can you please make a top 10 essential things you need to start a wholesaling career? I could. I could. That's an idea. So thanks for that. Um, but I do have a video that I made, I think, for New Year's or around that time on how you can start, what you need to start wholesaling in 2019. Um, so you can check that video out. I could make a more in-depth one or a detailed one with 10 things like you asked. So, yeah. How did you figure comps for our house plus the acres along with it? Mm, a lot of times land isn't worth much. So if somebody's like, um, oh, I have a house that sits on 20 acres. Good for you what's the house worth you know what's the property worth and then go from there oh oh i think i like this question i don't know i didn't finish reading it clinton said is it hard to do business with other cultures meaning did you feel you had to build a great rapport before talking business is it hard to do business with other cultures i think just me as a person i'm able to get along with any most people um so a lot of times I do get like sometimes language barriers or you know accents or whatever and I just kind of match and mirror that is a great um, what do you call it it's a strategy for negotiating and just interpersonal communication in general match and mirror so a lot of times I find somebody on the phone no matter what culture they are they could be American or whatever and they're like yeah what do you want like mm, mm, mm. they're like a driver Gonna match it. I'm like, I, let me get right to the point then. What, what rapport? No rapport. You don't want rapport. You just want to get to the point. So, um, yeah, I kind of just get it that way. If it's somebody who likes to talk a lot, then I give them an ear. Um, so, yeah, it just depends in the culture. I, it doesn't really, I think, affect much. Um, but you can ask about the culture, and people love talking about themselves and their culture a lot of times, sometimes. But, um, yeah, try that. Do you use direct mail? If so, do you use a site to send it or do you personally write the da, da, da? I do use direct mail. When I first started out, I'm talking about, I must have had like a, what's a carpal tunnel or something because I used to write them out. Oh my goodness, write it, write it, write it, write it. I used to recruit my brothers. My whole family would be writing these letters handwritten. And then we upgraded our lives to now outsourcing it and having them printed out or whatever. Um, but there's tricks too. If you want to like do a handwritten look, you can get like a yellow <clears throat> pad notepad paper or whatever the yellow with the lines you write it you line it up there's a whole trick maybe i'll do a video maybe not but <laughs> and then you can print it and scan it and then leave blanks for the name and the address and then that's all that's the only thing you have to write it's already your handwriting with the template of the letter you just um customize it with the person's name and address but uh unless you don't have money for it i wouldn't handwrite it If I don't have an LLC yet and a potential seller asks what company I'm with, what should I say? Hmm, what a potential, I mean, they, maybe they do ask you for your company. Just say that I'm, I am the company. Mm -hmm. Somebody said that to me the other day. I was calling him and long story short, he was like a investor or a landlord who owned a property. He was like, I am the company. I was like, I like that answer. So, I mean, not not in a rude way to say it to them. Just be like, you know, or you can just say, you know, actually, I don't have a company. I'm, I'm a simple guy and I got some cash sitting away somewhere and I just put it into property. So, what's up? You know, play it how you want. It depends. 
Somebody is asking you about advice on double closing. What's the question? Say, so, do you have any advice on doing a double close? It's my first deal and I cannot sign the contract. I really lost and don't know what to do. Okay. It's also listed to you here. It's also what? Sorry. It is also listed. Do you think that will be a problem? Dun, dun, dun. Well, <laughs> if it's listed, then uh, it's not a problem unless... Excuse me, it's not a problem unless the price that you're asking is higher than the list price, which may not be a problem either. It just depends on how hot the deal is and how hot the area is. So your first question was about double closing because you cannot assign this deal. <clears throat> Never fear, you can double close it. So um, yeah, you have a contract with, if it's listed, I'm assuming you have it with the agent. Um, so you have a contract with the agent and then you have your separate contract purchase and sell agreement with the buyer and it has stuff about like um this deal is contingent upon me obtaining marketable title from the owner on record things along the lines where you know if something happens with the seller then you're off the hook if the buyer transaction can't happen so anyways you have a purchase and sell agreement with the buyer which is not an assignment agreement and then you send it to the attorney you let them know what you are planning to do um, you know, I want to close, it's a simultaneous transaction, a double close, and you can use the seller, the buyer's funds to fund your A to B closing, so pass-through funding, transactional funding. I hope that makes sense. Um, Nick J, your mentor, did you pay a guru? I did not pay a guru. No, he wasn't a guru. Um, what was your worst experience as a wholesaler? Um, losing earnest money. Okay, Daniel is asking you if you will want to close it, help him close the deal. I would love to help you close the deal. What did you say, Darnell? Hey, would you be able or open to helping me close with the closing a deal? With yeah, yeah, answer is yes. <laughs> do you do one on one coaching, Michaela? I believe. Yeah, hit me up. Link later when this is all said and done. Oh my God, look at the time, guys. We got three minutes. Time really goes by. I did not think y'all would be here. That's so crazy. Why do you have a t-shirt with a periodic table? I don't get it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's why you don't get it. Because look, now, look. What does it I get say? dirty. It says real estate. That's why. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you can purchase yours too. I, I uh, designed it. I'm a nerd, so got a science background. That's why I have a shirt. <laughs> I know, he probably he probably just saw this and was like, what are, what are you wearing? Yeah, it says real estate. It's a periodic table. Find it myself. I'll get you one. Do you know how to overcome the objection? Let me talk. Oh, that's a good one. Let me talk to my wife or my husband. Wow. That is a great. Uh, anyways, I'm sorry. Yeah, how to overcome that? Well, you can go along the line. There's a lot of ways to overcome it. That's a whole probably for another day overcoming objections and negotiating. But uh, one way you can say, you know, I really value the, I value the fact that you want to take into consideration or bring your wife or husband into this very big decision that you're going to make. Now, do you mind, it depends, are you face to face? Um, if, they're face if you're face to face, do you mind getting your wife on the phone? And you know, I can explain it to her myself. That way, you know, there's no misconstrued. Any questions she has, she can direct them to me as well. And then you all get the full story. Um, if you're on the phone, same thing. Hey, is your husband around? Can he, you know, put me on speaker and we can all answer the same questions? Um, or you can be like, yeah, I, I definitely respect that. I can give you some time to talk it over with your wife. Mind if I follow back up with you tomorrow? See what you guys thought about. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but that is an objection for them to like buy time or maybe they truly just are not the decision maker. So you want to get the decision maker or makers on the phone. Like you want to be you don't want a messenger or middleman, so you want to be the one in contact with them. I hope that answered your question, because that is a great question, but it's a very complex answer. Wait, Dari, can you answer me and Nick's questions? How did you deal with a buyer going behind you? Oh, child, I didn't see that, but thanks. Um, never had a buyer go behind me that I know of, to be honest. So um, there's ways to protect yourself, though. You can have, like, I've heard of people doing, like, non-disclosure when you put out a deal with an address and information to a buyer you can have them sign a non-disclosure you can file the memorandum of a contract at the courthouse when you get under contract with the seller so that just states that nobody can nobody's allowed to purchase this house but you and if for some reason they go around you 
it's a no it's a dope, it's a no deal because you clouded the title and some way shape or form you're going to get compensated if they do end up going through what contract saves you um i don't know what you mean what contract saves me hi robin thanks for answering my question above last one when doing a jv deal with another wholesaler what all would you want them to have covered to make a split 70 30 blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know. I've never, I say stuff like 70, 30, 60, 40. I've never done, it's either 50, 50, or I set your price, or you set your price. Um, now there has been a time where we, it was like three of us involved or something, we did it 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. but it all depends. It all depends. It's all negotiable, to be honest. Um, hey, Dara, have you ever used transactional funding? Mm, yes, but no. It's like, I just had the, the buyer's funds pass through. So yes, I have. <laughs> How should I contact you? I'm just getting started. You can, um, I'm about to post this. I'm about to cut this off, post it, and then I'll have a link to uh, how you can reach me for a consultation. When filling out a seller contract, are you giving the earnest money to the seller right there? No, ooh, no, whoa, I can't stop for that. You never give earnest money to uh, a seller. Now, I don't give earnest money at all, but if I do, it's never to the seller. It's always to the closing attorney. So in that case, I guess I answered a question about how I only give the closing attorney the documents when I have a buyer. Um, but in that case, you would open up escrow if earnest money is involved and give it to the attorney or the title company. Never the seller. Hey, hey, wait, skip tracing service you find is a great. Oh, I said it before. Somebody asked that question. I haven't found one that's like, yeah, man, you got my endorsement of approval i outsourced it to a guy who's like a bounty hunter more or less so um you're so young i'm 50 and you're so motivating oh thanks colleen all right guys i'm about to wrap this up they're about to kick me out of this place watch video so yeah i mean this was really fun for me i'm really glad that you guys came and asked your questions if i didn't get to your question um this will be like posted on my channel so i'm about to post it on my channel and just leave a comment with your question and I'll get to you. And then if not, book a consultation. If you have like a really in-depth question or where you really want like a strategy plan from me, if you want like a pathway for me to write out or help you, then definitely I'll have a link to how you can schedule a consultation with me. Um, but uh, the guy who asked about the shirt, I mean, for real though, if you want it, let me know. It's for sale, it's only $20. But um, this has been fun, guys. Yeah, I'll have a link on how to buy it. This has been really fun, guys. You guys really asked me a lot of questions. Nobody asked me non-real estate questions, but that's okay, too. Uh, maybe I'll do another one, but that's cool. Somebody, oh, I like that. They're not true friends like me. She has videos already on half these questions, okay? I would just be emailing DMing you about a bird dog. P.S. Love your dancing, I'm a dancer, too. Oh, Shamika, hey, girl. I'll look out for your DM. All right, well, that's it, guys. It's been real. Thank you so much for watching. Everything that you would need is going to be down in the description box below. Happy wholesaling. Don't know how to end this, but I'm about to end it.